Hello again, everybody. Uh, welcome to another installment of the sequence of videos introducing uh, the features of Python for people who already know how to program in another language and just want to pick up the features of Python very quickly. Now, as you program already, you realize there's still some features of whatever it is programming language you know that I haven't shown the Python equivalent of. And that's what we're going to get to today, uh, and that's really forms of encapsulation, particularly subprograms or functions or whatever they might be in your favorite language. Uh, so let's go back to looking at our code and uh, we can go through some examples of how that works. So we're going to look at different kinds of encapsulation, uh, code encapsulation, data encapsulation. So most programming language has uh, some kinds of function. So we, uh, we use the def keyword in um, Python to introduce a function. And it's followed by some brackets, which is where the arguments go. And even if there are no arguments, you have to do that and it put the colon. And that shows the indentation. And now we're in the body of the function. So if we were backed off the indentation we would be no longer in the body of that function so we could do a very simple function and those of you who know um, some internet memes I could have my function uh, return a random number it is random I've just rolled a die and I got four so I can always get a random number by calling my function well it's a bit of a joke isn't it so how do I call uh, my function and we have to have the parentheses in place uh, if we're going to call my function and I can run it and then we get my random number of four printed out. That's uh, quite straightforward. Uh, I will put a, a note here for something coming up in the future so depending on your language uh, this is actually a shorthand notation because we're uh, because in Python it's dynamically typed and functions are first class objects so actually this is a shorthand for assigning a lambda function to a variable um, but as it happens so often we can use the def keyword we'll get into lambda functions and functions as first class objects a bit later but as you already program I thought I'd briefly mention it but if you're in the beginning of your programming experience you would go What's that? So we'll start with the simple way. Okay, let's have some arguments. Um, so my arguments can be x and y. I'll put them in, but we're not typing them. Um, and I could return some operation of adding x to y, and then I can give the two arguments that I want. So now my function will be performing addition of x and y and I'll be printing that value of 1 and 2 and I run that and I'll get 3. But actually all of the uh, functions in Python because it's dynamically typed are really what many languages call generic and I can give arguments of different type I can give an argument that are a string. So I can call my function of 1 and 2 and now these are dynamically typed as strings and the plus operator is defined for string and I get string concatenation. So there are quite a few consequences of that but it gives you an idea of the kind of thing that you can do in functions in Python. Now, those of you who are all experienced programmers and you know we'll use functions for making the code clear, for repeating uh, common phrases of code over and over again, or for functional programming, like you do in some functional programming languages, and uh, all kinds of uh, things like that. So that's basically what we need to know uh, about using functions uh, for the time being. And of course we can pull in functions from uh, lots of APIs or libraries 
uh, that there are available in Python, and that's one of the reasons for choosing Python. So another omission that I've made and what I've told you so far is input-output. So I haven't told you too much about input-output and uh, using some files. Um, I've done the print statement, but I haven't looked at the wider um, mechanisms. So using a file um, is quite simple. Um, I can uh, just call the open and I can just give it the name of the file. So I've got a junk file um, and in fact if I'm using Jupyter I could look here and I've got the names of, of the files that I've got here. Um, but I happen to know I've got a, a file called junk.txt um, and a second parameter says it is used to say if I want to read the file, write to the file, append to the file. So standard properties that you get on an, on an open. So I can open a file. I can do some operation to extract um, something from the file. So I can do my file and I can call the read method from there and then I can print the stuff that I get from the file. So here is, there we are, and I've just got a piece of text out of my file. And uh, if we wanted to know more about reading different types, uh, which can be done with type conversion or the other methods, of course, as an experienced programmer, you can go and uh, look in the documentation there. So just one more thing uh, that you can do with a file is, um, is something called a context manager. Um, we can do this with all kinds of things, but it's particularly useful for files. I could, if I'm going to be working on this file for a bit, I can use a with statement. and introduce the context um, and although this does look very similar I can I can open the file as F and then use F or I could say as my file. What I failed to do here was I failed to close the file. Um, and I should sort of close the file uh, when I run it. But with the context manager, when it exits the indentation, the context, it makes sure that the file is closed cleanly. So basically you're, ha you're dealing with the scope of this particular object or file and that's useful for input output. So I, I can run this and it does the same but I haven't had to do the close of the file that I did before. Okay, so that's some basic encapsulation functions, uh, a little bit about I.O. and context managers that deal with some scope of objects. And when I keep saying object, but I haven't really talked about classes. So I need to start to talk about classes. And for most of you, if you've done some object-oriented programming, you'll be looking at that. Uh, but if you haven't completely uh, embraced object-oriented uh, programming. Uh, we're really dealing with encapsulation and namespaces. So we could have a class. So we've got to think what we're going to have a class on. Um, so we could have a class, I don't know, some standard examples. Um, 
we want to store some information about a book. So encapsulation, we can do two things. We can have a class that is encapsulating data items, or we can have a class that's encapsulating code items but as codes, and I've already hinted at functions of first class items, first class elements, first class objects. Um, there shouldn't really be any difference, but I'm doing paradigms with other languages. So we could have just a class that's going to store, say, something about books. If we just wanted to do this similar to Pascal records or structs in C, um, and we're not storing any methods or functions in there, our class could t contain no code, and there is a keyword pass that says, well, I'm, I'm not, there's no executable part of this card uh, class, and, um, but if we wanted to make one of these objects, we could just instantiate it, and that makes one individual book object. Um, and then we wanted to store something about it. And because it's dynamically typed, we could store the title of the book equals how to handle your fudgy. author to the book and, and then we could see what happens if we printed my book okay let's try and run that so it's got a book object um, but I could print my book title right and I could do further things. Uh, like I could have a, another one. So I can uh, make a copy of that book object. Now, uh, some other things. Uh, if it one of the things you can do, and you do see in other programs, I can actually say that this class book is an object, um, and that will still run the same. So you will see some that say bracket object and some don't. The details of the intricacies of that I'll leave. I'm putting that in there if you look at other Python texts or help material, because it's varied between Python 2 and Python 3. Um, if it helps you understand it, you can say this is an object, or you, if you miss out the bracket object, it assumes it's there anyway. It's to do with inheritance from objects. Right, now that might make some people uncomfortable, or maybe we want to force it that um, the class of, well, I, I'm going to call it books so that we don't get into a name clash in my code and I can optionally say that I'm making up an object so say I want to force this to contain a title and author um, I can have an object initiator here uh, for uh, the book and this will contain I have to say self because I'm going to initiate the object and and that means when anyone creates one of these so basically this is a special kind of method inside so this is a code that's part of the object books and then I can say self dot 
title is it equal to title and self dot author is equal to author and uh, now I've done the initialization of the object book so now I can say my book becomes a book but if I just try and create a book oh I didn't want a semicolon there I'm still thinking C or Algol but notice it didn't bother anyway so I do a run here and I should get an error you see it's now saying wait a minute you've got to give me a title and an author so now I've got to make um, a book called uh, Sick Parrots uh, so I've given a title and an author now and um, it should create uh, I've called it books books okay let's uh, just check what I've done wrong there okay silly me what I forgot to do that's a method. I forgot to say this is the instantiator method. So now if I run it. But it's good to make uh, those kind of mistakes. So you can see what happens. So now I can print out my book dot title and uh, we've got the title so I've kind of achieved the same thing here uh, I've just created a generic object and because the language is dynamically typed I can stuff whatever fields I like inside the object at runtime or I can introduce a, a fixed structure um, for the object and uh, and put some enforcement in the instantiation um, which you get in some languages. Now I can add other methods in there um, so for example if you're object oriented you you can put putters and getters so if I wanted to I could put a method that uh, gets the author so I have to say self and I could return self.author and I could put a method called get title which could return that and I could add those to the class of object and I could call my book get author getter and run it and it would extract that and uh, rather than me put them in you, you can deal with the visibility uh, of these things and make some things inside their private and all kinds of other things so we've, we've created a new namespace here and it's a way of encapsulating some things so I could go further on the object oriented stuff but those are the basics of creating a class and 
using the class to encapsulate data storage, even though I already hinted that the data structuring in Python giving you tuples, lists and dictionaries in itself is very powerful. And of course, you can now use these classes within them. So these can now be elements within dictionaries, elements within lists and elements within tuples. And uh, the things that you can store inside them can be methods as well. So you've got quite a lot of power. If you're already a programmer, you will know what to do with those. You just needed to know how to do them in Python. So those are some of uh, the basic things. Some of the more advanced things I'll do in another episode um, because we can now also define operators on these objects and, and uh, deal with printing them. Well, let me just add how to, to, to print them at the moment. So one of the meta methods is I can say how we convert, for example, a book into a string. So if I wanted to <coughs> print <coughs> that, I could say I could just say something like if we wanted to print a book with title by author. So now I can print my book and it knows to use this type conversion meta method in for this object. So let me just run that for you and now it's realized to print I needed a string inside the method we've automatically given another method for string conversion which generates this string and we get that string printed out and there's various other meta methods that we can do with objects um, but I think I'll touch on them in a future episode this episode's probably long enough for now and I've given you most of the things now over these few episodes that most programmers would need to get started. Um, and uh, I'm going to add some more uh, things that Python programmers will probably be shouting out now. Why don't you tell them about this, this and this features coming up in a future episode. Um, but I don't want to confuse too many viewers who are just at the beginning of their programming experience uh, and will get confused by some of the features that they don't know how to do currently. So some of it will be learning new programming things through the, v v the medium of Python. So I hope you found that useful and another episode will be coming up and as I said it's going to, we're going to get more and more into advanced features of Python. So thank you for your time and um, I'll be up in a few days with another episode.